Good morning and welcome. This is Dr. Dossett, the original OG, Overseas Game Changers. And thank you once again to another segment of the original OG's talk show. You know, over the last three weeks, we have been meeting wonderful people who found success, clarity, and actually their purpose living on foreign soil. You know, when I first started this show, I only wanted to focus on women. And then I expanded it to a more confined niche of African American women, and then I can then I expanded it to women from the diaspora, but now I'm doing something very different as a game changer. the The purpose of today's show is really to look at what women are doing to actually unmute their voice. One such person who has been leading the path, who has been leading the group for women and helping them, is to talk about something very sensitive, almost to the point that when I mention it on preach the word network, you may say, well, how does this fit with the model of the television program? Well, number one, we are here to educate. We're here to inspire. We're here to uplift women in particular. An area that even American women don't talk about or women in the Western world is something very sensitive. In fact, I remember I met a woman who was in her forties. When I talked about the menstrual cycle, she started to giggle. <laughs> And I said, oh my God, why is that such an area that brings discomfort? Well, one person that you have in front of me, Dr. Sophie Rambaugh, is a woman that has really changed the narrative and brought in the optics as to the importance of understanding the woman's menstrual cycle. Without further ado, I welcome my good friend. In fact, she may not believe it, but she is my good friend, Dr. Sophie Rambaugh. Welcome and welcome to the original OG's talk show. Good morning to you. Good morning, Dr. Cheryl. Thank you for having me. Yes. Now, if you notice a little bit in her accent, she's French. Now, this is a, a French woman who has moved to China. Let's get an understanding of what prompted such a drastic move to China. Have you often thought about this when you were a young person, like in your 20s? that you said, maybe one day I'll go live in China. What prompted the move to China? I grew up in foreign countries. I, I grew up actually in countries in Africa for 10 years. Then we moved back to France. So I think living abroad was always a plan for me. I just did not expect China. Um, I arrived in China by accident, like really by accident. I was um, doing my PhD and I applied for different jobs in different countries of the world and I got hired in China and I don't even remember applying to China. But here I am in China. It's been eight years now. Eight years. Wow. If you hear it again, now one thing I have to disagree with her, she said by accident. There are no accidents. Everything is connected to a pattern that has often been predetermined before you were even born. And did you notice something else about her? Now, if you look at her, and some of you have never even been to Africa, here we have a French woman, she grew up in Africa. Now, what a game-changing move was that? Tell us, why were you in Africa during that time? Uh, my father, well, my father, just like me, he traveled the world since he was a young man. And by the time he met my mom, he was working in Africa, and eventually she followed and started a family there. I was born in France, but they didn't want to stay in France. Um, they moved back to Africa very quick when I was a few months old. And my dad was just working uh, for local international companies. Wow. Now, I want to say something. If you notice, the people that I communicated with over the last three weeks, we have very uh, diverse and interesting and actually culturally rich environments. So, in fact, Dr. Sophie had been fortunate she had been exposed to different cultures early on, and this created an awareness for her that pretty much all people are pretty much the same. But what I love about her, I know that I have grown a lot since I've lived in China and Dr. Sophie, but I got to be honest to my viewers. At one point, she and I, we didn't get along. And I often wanted to tell her, I'm going to put it on national television, local television. I am sorry for misunderstanding you. I think we were both struggling with who we are and trying to fit in. So at this point, my next question is, please accept my apologies, number one. And number two, do you see or have you experienced or noticed evidence of your personal growth since moving to China? 
Uh, first, um, I think you don't need to apologize. Uh, we, we did have some disagreement, but it was more a strong woman coming together mm. and knowing what will come out and eventually grow into a beautiful friendship. And here we are today. Um, second, I would say that I grew a lot in China. <laughs> China yeah. uh, uh, um, very hard, is a very hard teacher. Especially for me, even though I'm a third culture kid, I'm a kid who grew up in between cultures. Coming to China was a big challenge. I didn't quite feel the culture shock, but I did notice some changes over the years. I think I found myself and I grew from a, a woman who was very childish, very self-centered in a lot of pain. I grew into some uh, a, a new woman who is more confident, who is not afraid of speaking out, and who is more in peace with her emotions. And I had people coming to me uh, during my last seminar, and people I met just once, or I talked to on WeChat a few years ago, and they came to me, they came to my seminar, and they told me in person, you are such a different person from a few years back. You have changed, changed so much. You are wonderful now. I want to. I want to get to get to know you more. I, I want to I have coffee with you. I want to know more about you because you are so different. You you are very nice to us. <laughs> <laughs> so there is also the assumption, <laughs> also the assumption that you weren't very nice before, like you said. I, I think wasn't. She, I at wasn't. least you admitted it. At least now that you've broken free of those uh, barriers and limitations. The other thing is you noticed, uh, Dr. Sophie did indicate that she and I, we had like a power struggle because we are very strong women. We are very worldly women, global women. And uh, Sophie's a very classy woman. She's a class act herself in and of itself. And I remember when we bumped heads it's because we were very strong and we had our own opinions and we weren't going to budge. But that being said, let's now talk about your work because I honestly believe the work that you're involved in with helping women demystify the menstrual cycle, you have to be a strong person. You have to be a woman who is willing to stand and to exercise her own voice unapologetically. And so how did you get into your work? I wanna share with the group what we're looking at. Uh, this is her offering of her services. Tell us what your Level Up uh, International Coaching business is about. Please describe, please describe what we're looking at right now for our viewers. Um, Level Up International Consulting is inspired by video games. I have a strong video game background. It's about gaining uh, skills and leveling up to a new version of yourself. Mm -hmm. So I find this logo. This logo is a duality of the day and the night, but also the cold and... Um, the heat, the yin and the yang, that it's in between all of us. It's like yeah. cohabiting. Sometimes one part is stronger than the other. But we have to find balance in order to, to be happy with ourselves. Yes, and, and, and I just want to look at your services. You said part of the offering is you do um, seminars. Can you talk about how did you get into this work educating women, well, not women, excuse me, educating women, I can't bleep that out, but educating women in China about a topic that is very sensitive and oftentimes met with probably uh, embarrassment because China is a culture that is very um, shy in a sense. So tell me, how did you get into this work? Did you fall into it? Can you please describe a little I, bit of the journey? Yeah, I started exactly like you say, I was very much ashamed. Uh, my friend told me about this challenge, about um, I have to video blog, v-blog myself every day talking about my periods and my emotions during 28 days. And the first thing I told her was, I cannot show to everyone the kind of woman I, ha I am during my whole cycle. I, it's just so personal. Um, it's private. It's a private matter. And a year after, I came back to her and I told her, you know what, remember what I told you about the challenge? I think I was wrong. I should not be ashamed of talking about my period. I'm a woman. I, it should be a topic people call, uh, talk freely about because I have a lot of pain in my body and I think the pain I'm feeling through my cycle is because I'm denying my own femininity. I'm denying talking about it, even with doctors, with friends, with family. I don't talk about it. Therefore, I'm kind of accumulating a lot of pain I can feel during my period and the whole cycle. 
So in order to be more balanced in my mind and my body, I need to speak out. And just like you say, a lot of people are ashamed of talking about appeared. And what I want to do, I want to be this woman who talks, who gives a voice to all the women, child-free women, women who are menopause, women who cannot give birth. They're afraid of talking. So I tell them to talk to me and I will talk in the name. If the society is judging them, I will be the one protecting them from the judgment. I will be the one taking all the criticism and filtering all the goodness and give it to them. They don't have to be ashamed. I will be there for them. I will talk in their name. So maybe one day we won't have to be ashamed. And I was very surprised to see that uh, the Chinese society is not so ashamed of talking about periods. Okay. Um, I have found out that my university is offering free pads to the students in the toilets, in, in the restroom. Uh, and they're also educating students like sexual education, period education. And in the volunteer group, they are teachers. They are male students and female students. And now there is me. <laughs> I'm working with them. And it seems like the government is uh, donating a lot of money to this kind of association in order for women to have more hygienic, um, more hygienic cycle and to have more... Uh, freedom of choice, you know, when they go to the bathroom and they, they don't have pads or menstrual hygiene with them, it's available. It's for free. Nobody's asking for money. Nobody's judging. And slowly they are starting to change. I don't know what started this change, but slowly people are starting to talk about it and to support women in that sense. And it's very subtle, but it's common. That's, and I'm so happy because I got to be very candid. This is a part of the life. I got to be very candid. When I was in China, 2011 to 2020, we're going to keep going. When I was in China, I remember going to the women's restrooms. At that time, I knew there was no education about the hygienic impact and the hygienic practices that are needed for when a woman is undergoing her cycle. I'm glad at the time I didn't wear glasses because the things that I saw would make you really want to leave. And so it all starts with education. Pardon me, it all starts with education. And so in this instance, Dr. Sophie, who is an academic scholar, having her as the voice for the muted in this particular area is impactful, is a game changer. It really is. And so I am honored, I am blessed, I am thankful that someone now has brought this to the forefront. It is so critical. We talk about a headache, but we don't talk about something very personal, which requires a lot of more, a lot more education, especially both between the genders, male and female. And so what you're doing truly is a game-changing initiative. Now let's talk about your organization. Is your organization funded? Is it based on membership? We're going to keep going. I'm having a little technical difficulty, but we're going to keep going. Is it based on membership? How can someone be a part of it? How do you reach your constituents or your stakeholders? Can you please speak to that? Thank you. I'm going to take this part off the screen so I can look at you fully. All righty. Go ahead, dear. Mm -hmm. I'm, I started a partnership with uh, Zocentive, which is a company in wellness in, in, in China. The founder is an... French American men, okay, and which surprised me because I didn't know a lot of men were in wellness. I thought men were in wellness when it comes to fitness, of course, but when it comes to uh, mental health and physical well-being, detox, I haven't met a lot of men, and he's one of them. He reached out uh, to me. He told me that we could work together in order to take it to the next level. Yes. Uh, so it's a wonderful uh, collaboration I'm, I'm having with that with him. We just um, we're working on bringing the detox stories, which is about detoxing the body and the mind through uh, bath, uh, salt, essential oils, massage, but also workshops on the woman cycle. So it's just um, the beginning of a collaboration, and we are open for more collaboration with anyone who is in the wellness industry. And wellness is not about the body, it's 
also about the, um, the mind. I'm wearing a shirt here that says it's okay not to be okay. It's a shirt I bought from um, a company who promotes mental health, um, especially after a young woman committed suicide uh, in, in high school. And I think in China, we don't talk enough about mental health. We talk a lot about fitness, about eating well, but what's coming, what's in your mind? As a woman, even as a man, what's in your mind? What's going on? We need more awareness on mental health and physical health. Well, they, 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 are, they go together. And so, you know, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I mean, so what you're doing is, you know, like when I was in China, let's be honest, for whatever reason, I suffered on and off, battled with depression for years. And I was a silent sufferer. I didn't talk about it because uh, maybe embarrassment or shame. But at the end of the day, when I found my tribe, such as Dr. Sophie, we could talk very deep, have very profound conversations. And when you live overseas, and especially in a country as conservative as China, though we see the we see the other attachments that China has to consumerism, to talk about how you feel is more important than more important than really how you look when you think about it. I remember I suffered from an eating disorder emotional eating disorder in China. I never really talked about it. I tried to mask it. I tried to, you know, but one day I was in the kitchen and a little girl was outside and she saw my silhouette in the window. She said, mommy, she was Chinese, but she, mommy, I didn't know teacher was pregnant. I said, oh my God. <laughs> so when I heard that I was disappointed, I was saddened, but then I started thinking, I shouldn't have to let myself go, but I had no one to talk to. So finding an ally, finding a tribe is extremely important. So before we leave today, Dr. Sophie, I would like to ask you, since you've been involved in your work, where do you see that you're now making the greatest impact for next steps for your business? Can you speak to that, please? I think the greatest impact will be schools and education mm -hmm. i'm working with a lot of women uh, on a woman cycle but i've noticed that if you don't educate men and women from a very young age it's very hard to change how they think and what how they feel about themselves as an adult so i'm working on a collaboration with a french school and maybe another international school in order to give them um more awareness on the mind the body mental health physical health and how to respect each other because what why do women are not respected uh, especially when it comes to cycle menstrual cycle and sex education it's because there's a lack of education men they don't understand they don't understand what's going on so if they don't understand how can they respect it so it's about educating the young minds and china is starting to open a lot on that. Uh, that's starting to educate mm -mm, young from the high school students, sometimes even primary school students, um, is starting to uh, be taught in the curriculum. But, you know, still very uh, subtle. They need a bigger impact. This is where I come. Like, I'm not gonna, bo you know me, I'm not gonna be like just a little bit. I'm just gonna go strong and I'm gonna change everything. And I think that's what they're looking for and they, they, they wanna work with me because I don't do like half. I just go 200%. And, they, and this area, health education, I, I know that in the US, I was teaching in New York, uh, health education back in the, uh, now I'm dating myself in the 90s was a very important initiative. And then it all of a sudden it died off. Um, now we're noticing China is starting to pick up an awareness gradually, as you say, suddenly. But you, you are needed as a champion for the muted voices in this area. And so I'm excited about what the future holds, not only for China, but I'm excited for what the future holds for yourself. Have you thought about turning this uh, initiative, this body of work into a workbook? into a book that you can share not only your journey as a game changer in the area of menstrual cycle wellness for women, 
but as a result of an expat who has traveled to share your story about from moving from Africa to China. And let me say this, the one thing I love about Dr. Sophie, and I've always had, and I respect her, is her openness, her ability to interact with people from all walks of life. That is so important. And that is really the essence of a game changer. Game changers do not shy away from the challenge of being different. They embrace their, their differentness and they leverage their uniqueness in, a, in, in an environment that they are probably often overlooked. And as we have learned today, Dr. Sophie is impacting health and wellness, bringing the dialogue between men and women, a very sensitive topic, without shame, without remorse, and without guilt. At this point in our interview, Dr. Sophie, let me say thank you. And let me also end with one final thought. I'm going to give you a sentence and you're going to say whatever comes to your mind to finish that sentence. I know that wasn't in the prep notes, but oh well. <laughs> That's not the way I operate. I move according to the energy of the interviewee. So I want you to finish this thought before we close out this segment. I am certain that, I want you to finish that sentence. I am certain that. I am certain that great things are coming whenever we are ready for it. There you have it. She has decreed a thing as though it is now has in an existence. Once again, this is Dr. Dossett and Dr. Sophie Rambaud, two scholars coming together after about a year and a half. But I'm so happy because not only is she a guest, she is my friend. And Dr. Sophie, if I never said it to you before, I'm gonna say it to you again in front of hopefully 2 million viewers. I love you. Oh, I respect you. you. And I, I look forward, so I look forward <laughs> to see, girl, please. I look forward to seeing you again in China or Africa, or France, or Jamaica. Whatever it is, we are game changers and we are on the move. Thank you for your time. Peace and Thanks. blessings. Thank you for the interview. Have a great day.